A reading from the Franciscan Book of Saints. Blessed Mary of the Passion, Virgin, Third Order. Nantes in France is the native city of this religious foundress who did so much for the foreign missions. She was born there in 1839 and was a descendant of the old French family of Chapotin de Deauville. The Franciscan spirit of poverty and humility was evident in her at a very early age. In 1860, she was admitted to the Poor Clare Convent at Nantes, but the following year she was sent home because her health failed. Three years later, Mary joined the Sisters of St. Mary Reparatrix, and the next year she was sent to India. Having laboured with great success among the heathens there, Providence directed her to Rome. There, at the bidding of Pope Pius IX, she founded the Congregation of the Missionaries of Mary. As a result of arrangements with the Minister General of the Franciscan Order, her foundation was affiliated with the Third Order of St. Francis and took the name of the Franciscan Missionaries of Mary. Truly Franciscan in spirit, the Foundress urged her sisters to offer themselves as victims for the Church and for souls, to honour the Blessed Sacrament and the Immaculate Mother of God in a very special way, and in the heathen missions to employ all their resources for the salvation of souls. With real Franciscan charity, she devoted herself to the care of the lepers. At her death in 1904, the congregation numbered 86 houses in all parts of the world. She was extremely happy when the news was conveyed to her in 1900 that seven sisters had been martyred for the faith in China. She considered this the baptism of blood for her congregation. On one occasion she made this statement, I wish I had two lives, one with which I could always pray, the other with which to perform all the duty God imposes on me. A cardinal once said, Her very presence is somehow a power and an inspiration. Her example, her gifts and her virtues are a continual lesson. Her maternal heart is a safe refuge for her daughters. In 1904, the Jubilee year of the Immaculate Conception, Mary passed on to the eternal vision of God. God glorified her by many signs and wonders shortly after her death, and so urgent were the petitions of her clients that the cause of her beatification was soon introduced. A Reflection on Imitating Mary the Blessed Virgin Mary may well serve as our leader. Blessed Mother Mary learned this by experience. She rose to virtue and saintliness by following in the footsteps of Our Lady. The Blessed Virgin has given us an example of all the virtues we need to get to heaven. She proved her humble faith in the stable of Bethlehem and on the journey to Egypt. She showed thoughtful charity on her visit to Saint Elizabeth and at the wedding feast at Cana. We behold her unwavering patience amid sufferings as she stands underneath the cross of Jesus, and sin had no part in her. With good reason, Holy Church places on her lips the words, Blessed is the man who hears me, Proverbs 8.34. Cling to Mary and you will not go astray. We should be filled with confidence when we imitate Mary. Let us take pleasure in honouring her in our hearts by frequent little acts of piety, in our external conduct, let us imitate her faith, her charity, her patience and her purity. Let us not only sing hymns of devotion to her, but let us live so that we may never cause her sorrow or make her ashamed of us. By our words and actions, we should strive to fulfill the prophecy. Behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. Luke 1, 48. How practical is your veneration of the Mother of God? Fear may well form a part of our veneration of Mary. We should fear to love her too little, especially since everything we do for the love of the Mother of God reflects on her Divine Son. We should fear to be separated from Mary, which happens when we commit sin. May the words which Holy Mother Church places on the lips of the Blessed Virgin ever resound in our hearts. He who shall find me shall find life, and shall have salvation from the Lord. But he who shall sin against me shall hurt his own soul. Proverbs 8.35-36 Let us be mindful of the words, We follow you with all our heart, and we fear you. 
Daniel 3.41 Prayer of the Church Grant we beseech thee, O Lord, that we thy servants may evermore enjoy health of mind and body, and through the glorious intercession of blessed Mary ever-Virgin be delivered from present sorrows and enjoy everlasting gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.